Hey, you get another unit of Mr. Kelly. This is Unit 4, Section 1. We're talking about ratios and proportions. What is that? Optimus Prime. No more factors. Do you remember hearing phrases such as miles per hour or dollars per pound? I mean, what's the same between those two? The word per. Okay, what does per mean? Usually means we have division going on. So we have miles per one hour. So many miles for so many hours. Okay, we have so many dollars for so many pounds. These are called unit rates. Okay, because it's telling you for one, so like one hour would be so fast and one pound would cost so much. Okay, these are type of ratios. Ratios are where you compare two quantities. That's it. Okay, it's when we use division to compare two quantities. Uh, there's a couple ways we can write it. We can write it A to B. We use the words, word up. We can use a colon. Okay, that's colon there, A to B. Or, most commonly in math, we'll use the division sign, okay? And, of course, B cannot equal zero for the reasons that I don't want to go too much into here, but that's just bad when you divide by zero. We know that from before, breaking math rules. So each ratio is read the ratio of A to B. I could say that for all three of these. It's the ratio of A to B, the ratio of A to B. Ratio should be written in the simplest form, which means you might have to reduce some of these reducing like a fraction let's look at mr sullivan and his autobots we have 15 autobots they're the good guys if you remember and we have 12 decepticons in his transformer collection find the ratio of autobots to decepticons all right well that should be easy enough what we're going to do we're going to actually write out the words to help us this is important as we do our ratios i'm going to write out let's put a right here all right so we need autobots write that out Two Decepticons. Decepticons. Okay, it's going to equal what? So the reason why we do this is when we put numbers over here, when we're writing our ratio, we want to make sure we put the numbers in the right place. And to do that, we use this little ratio with the uh, units on there. It's like how many of what? How many Autobots? All right, so we have 15. So there's 15 Autobots. That goes right here. All right, the same as it is over there. And we have 12 Decepticons that would come right here. Now we need to reduce. So 15 to 12, you can take a 3 out of both. We're going to call this what? 5 over 4. So it's 5 Autobots for every 4 Decepticons. So you give me 4 Decepticons, he actually has 5 Autobots for that. That's easy enough. Let's do part B. Find the ratio of Decepticons. All right, so we're going to write it out. Decepticons. Decepticons to total transformers. So I'm going to write the word total there. They don't actually tell you the total, but they do. Huh? Put these two together. What do you get? Total transformers here. We have 27 total. All right. So that's another reason why we want to write this ratio here. So it kind of helps us figure out, well, Decepticons, we have 12. The total, there's 27. Now it's a reduce type of thing again. We can take a 3 out of both. That'll give us a 4 over a 9-er. And guess what? It's 4 Decepticons for every 9 total. All right. So that's how we do our ratios. Let's look at an example with Bruss looking at his squeaky clean new Keds. Yesterday he attempted to tie these pearly white sneaks 18 times. That's how many attempts he has. He was successful six times. Now, everybody knows I make these problems up. They're not true. He's working towards getting up to six times, but we're going to give him credit when he gets there. All right, so find the ratio of. So I'm going to mark this. The number of times he was not successful. All right, so I'm going to circle that. To the total number of attempts. All right, so that's basically what we want. So we want not successful all over the total number of attempts. So let's go back up and see if we can mark our text here. All right, he attempted to tie these pearly white sneakers 18 times. So that's going to be the total. I can put that right here. And he was successful six times, but they want to know not successful. So if we do 18 minus 6, that'll tell us this is total. This is successful. This will equal not successful. That's a 12. So we get 12 over 18. All right, does that reduce? You betcha. Put a 6. Okay, take a six out of both of those, so we'll get two out of three. So it's two times he was not successful for every three total times he tries. Well, that seems like brust. That's pretty close. Now let's talk about proportions. If you have two ratios that are equivalent, they're basically the same. Okay, so look, here we have A over B, and that's the same as C over D. All right, and again, these can't be zero. That's why this stuff is necessary. But that's called a proportion. It's two equal ratios. 
Okay, they're equivalent. I shouldn't say equal because equal means exactly the same, but they're equivalent. Let me give you some examples. 2 over 3 and 20 over 30. All right, they're equivalent to each other. Okay, so they're actually a nice little proportion that we can set up right there. Um, one of the ways we can check to see if two ratios are in proportion is by cross multiplying. All right, so if we cross multiply here, we get 2 times 30 is 60. Is that equal to 3 times 20, which is 60? Yes, it is. All right, so when we cross multiply there, it's, it's a way to check to see if uh, two ratios are in proportion. All right, to solve proportion with variable and numerator, you can use the same methods we use to solve equations. We're going to get more into cross multiplying in the next section, but for right now, we're just going to solve these equations using our opposite operations. Okay, first example. These are proportions. They're telling you. They want you to find the value of x that will make this true. Okay, so to find the value of x, what we're going to do, we're just going to solve these equations like a regular old uh, equation that we did in unit 3 here. Here we have x divided by 15. You know, what the question asks, what value of x when you divide it by 15 will make it equal 22 over 6? So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 15. Okay, hold off on the cross multiplying. We'll get to that next time. But right now what we're looking at here, the 15s are going to cancel. This is just unit 3 stuff. They cancel. The x comes down. So now we have 15 times 22 over 6. I'm going to pull up the calculator to help you figure out how to put that in the calculator. It's 15 times 22 over 6. So if you put it in 15 times, you have to use parentheses. This is one way to do it. Okay, 22 over 6. Make sure that you use parentheses with your fractions. That's the biggest thing I want to emphasize because that's where students make mistakes. They don't put their parentheses around their fractions. So 15 times 22 over 6, when you hit enter, it tells you 55 you're all done. I mean, the calculator will give you, I mean, you shouldn't miss these. These are pretty simple stuff. Okay, I'm going to show you a different way to do it in the calculator too, depending on which, uh, what your operating system is. That's a 55 right there. All right, let's go back to the calculator. Okay, here's the other way. If your calculator's been updated, you can hit alpha and then the y equals button. And we get these nice little things right here. Okay, so what we're looking at, uh, the first one will give you a numerator and a denominator. All right, so what do we want to do? Let's quit here. I always like to quit because I didn't know what I was doing before I started here. And we want to do 15, so 1, 5, times, if you hit alpha and then the y equals button, this, again, only works if your calculator's been updated. So if it's not been updated, talk to your teacher. But we're talking about number one here, and the little fraction thing shows up, and we can put 22 over 6, and there you go. It's 15 times 22 over 6. It'll give you 55. That's a different way to do it. All right, so now I've shown you how to do it on the calculator. We're going to breeze through some of these. Uh, the second example, it's m divided by 12. The opposite would be times 12 on each side. So we're going to do that. I'm going to use some canceling. They're going to cancel and give me an M. On the left-hand side, look, 12 and a 2, that cancels. I can, take a, I can take a 2 out of both and get a 6 up here. So 6 and a 1. So I just get 6 times 9, which is 54. Okay, you can put it in the calculator if you need to, but that's more work. Use your brain. Trust it. Okay, how about this one? It's opposite operations. We need to remember the last uh, unit we have here. First, you subtract 4, and then you divide by 39. So the opposite of dividing by 39 is multiplying by 39, and then we need to add 4. So those are the steps you need to take. So we're going to multiply both sides by 39. Now, this is ugly. I would use the calculator for this. Actually, I wouldn't. I'm going to cancel these out. We don't need a calculator. Look at this. These cancel. 13 goes into 13 once. 13 goes into 39 three times. So now we get 3 times 5, which is 15, and that's going to equal k minus 4. Easy enough. Now what? Add 4 to each side. Trust yourselves. You can do this math without the calculator, even though it's there to help you if you need it. All right, why don't you try doing the next two? Pause the video. Do the next two by yourself. Go! Okay, so we are back, and hopefully you paused the video and you worked at these. I have uh, two examples, and I quit halfway through the second one just so we could talk through it together. And the first one, you multiply both sides by 5. I canceled that 5 and 15. I got 1 over 3. And then 36 and 3 cancel. Guess what? That gives you 12. Okay, you can plug in the calculator and figure it out if you want, but you should get R equals 4 on that one. The one on the right, multiply both sides by 8, and you get 56 over 112. Guess what that equals? That equals a half. All right, your calculator will tell you 0.5. But that, I like one half, and then you need to add three to both sides. So what's a half plus three? 
that's kind of written funny, but that equals 3.5 or 3.5. Both of them are perfectly acceptable. If you had 3.5, that's a smiley face. We're good with that. All right, so let's look at the next part. Don't pause the video there. In the first four games of the season, a soccer team scored a total of 10 goals. All right, so I'm going to... 10 goals, that's important. If this trend continues, how many goals will the team score in the 18 remaining games of the season? All right, so in the first four games. So what are we comparing here? We're comparing goals and games. So, so many goals per game. So let's write that out. Goals and how many games? All right, so in the first four games. So that little unit right there helps you out because you know to put the four down here because that's the game. All right, and then they scored 10 goals. So the 10 goes up there. If this trend continues, how many goals will the team score in 18 remaining games of the season? You just put the 18 down here. Okay, because it's a game. So four games, 18 games, they're in the same place. We want to know right here how many goals. So we put an X because we don't know that value. So here we go. Multiply both sides by 18. And I love to cross cancel. It's one of my favorite things to do in the summertime. I just sit out on my porch and I cross cancel. Check this out. We get a 2 here. That'll give me 9. And that'll give me a 2. Oh, check this out. I got the 10 and the 2. That'll give me a 5. And that'll give me a 1, right? It's just like reducing fractions when you cross cancel. But I'm left with a 9 and a 5. That's 45. Okay, so 45 is going to equal X. So our answer is 45 goals. And how do we know it's goals and not games? Because it's up here where the goals are. Hey, that's it. That's the whole section. That's 4.1. This is Mr. Kelly and Baumholder. Do your practice. Remember, it's nice to be important. It's more important to be nice. Soup!